Hello, my name is Ingrid Torelli and I play Lily in Late Night with the Devil and you're listening to Pop Culture with Pat. What's your favourite scary movie? Check or treat! Hey guys, welcome back to Pop Culture with Pat. So I am so, so excited for today's guest. Today we are going to be talking with Lily herself from Late Night with the Devil, Ingrid Torelli. Thank you so much for coming on the show today, Ingrid. Thanks for having me. You are very welcome. So... Yeah, this uh, this movie, I, I got to see, you know, like an early advanced screening of it. And it's uh, it's one of my favorite movies of the year so far. So really excited to, to have you on the show. But before we kind of jump into things, you know, all things Late Night with the Devil and just a heads up, guys, uh, there might be some slight spoilers in here. So just a heads up on that. But before we jump into that, Ingrid, I just wanted to kind of I usually ask like first time guests, what was it? How did you kind of get into acting? Like, what was the inspiration behind that just like initially for you? Um, I think uh, it kind of happened out of the blue. I was doing gymnastics gymnastics at the time and I met a good friend who wanted to audition for a musical called Matilda, Matilda the musical. And um, I just went along to support her and I ended up getting the role. And yeah, just from then on, I got an agent and I started getting more into film and TV, which... It's great. Yeah. It's always it's always like interesting just to hear people's different stories, like how they how they got started. But that's that's so crazy. It's just kind of something like you said, it came out of the blue. It wasn't something that you're like, oh, like I want to be an actor. You just kind of went along with your your friend and it yeah. just I was like, why not? This sounds great. <laughs> yeah. Well, hey, and and now you're here, you know, starring in in what I think is gonna be like one of the most popular horror movies of of 2024, Late Night with the Devil. Where from what I like saw, I think like off based off like your IMDB, like where you hadn't really done much of horror before. Uh yeah. what about Late Night with the Devil kind of just initially attracted you in the first place uh, about like the project and the role? Yeah, I mean, I think well, I think the first thing, sorry, um, is that you often get kind of the same types of auditions, um, usually for like a rebellious teenager, and they're great too, but um, as soon as you get something different, it's really exciting. And I read the sides and from the get-go I was just really excited and it sounded like something really different and interesting. Uh, yeah. I'm curious, what do you remember, like what like the, the sides, like what the character description for Lily was when you initially read it? Oh, look, I don't know if I, I can't remember exactly, but, oh, what was the sides? I think it was a scene where, um, oh, yes, the scene with Jack on the chair. Yep. And um, telling him he's very handsome. Did it have, and, like, could you tell that he, that you, like, the character was possessed? Did it give, like, any indication to that? Do you remember? Oh, yeah. I'm um, in the description. I said possessed child. Okay. And that's really, really exciting. Yeah. It, I've never really done horror in the past. Well, look, I've been saying I haven't done horror. I did a short film a few years ago when I was maybe oh, 12. It's a short horror and they just filmed my feet. I'm like killing my sister. Oh, okay. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. But yeah, it was something so different. It was something really interesting. Yeah. You this don't really like come across your... those things often. Yeah, this was like your first kind of major like foray like into the the horror genre. So, yeah, I mean, yeah. you see something like that. I mean, it just yeah, it sounds like a really like, you know, interesting role. It's not every day you get to play someone that's uh, possessed. Yeah. So uh, I don't blame you for for wanting to take a, you know, a chance at it. One of my favorite parts about the movie is probably the uh, how you guys kind of captured the 70s aesthetic and just made it feel feel like a late night talk show. Being on those sets in that environment, how did that kind of like help your performance? Um, I think, well, it was a very contained environment. Um, uh, the crew, lots of the time, were in the seats, so watching us. So it felt quite contained and it definitely felt like I was on a show. Um, and, yeah, in terms of the 70s environment, walking onto set every day, it really felt like I was going back in time and the... The costume I was wearing, down to the, uh, down to the, just the atmosphere, it really felt like I was going, taking a trip back to the 70s. Um, and, yeah, it wasn't a massive studio, but we'd arrive early in the morning. Um, you know, I wouldn't really see the light of day. 
all day. <laughs> I come back out at night. Oh, it's dark again. Like how I came here. No, it was a lot of fun though. Yeah. So it, was it, it's interesting because like, so you kind of got to have almost like a, a live audience like in a way which you don't necessarily get to do all the time when you know filming different projects or tv series was that kind of i know like you're still kind of you know new to the acting like world but was that kind of like weird to almost have like a live audience watching you guys film or oh i mean i don't think it was something new because usually with i mean i've done a few like tv series and stuff nothing like this well, different genre, I mean, but yeah. um, you always have people watching you. So I think True. you kind of get used to that. But um, definitely with the amount of cameras we had on set, um, and like I said before, the atmosphere, it really felt like I was on a TV set. It didn't feel like I was, um, it didn't feel pretend. It felt very real when we were in it. Yeah. I feel like that makes it so much easier for you guys when it, feels authentic okay. and it just feels like you're actually in a place like you said rather than being just on yeah. a set um and especially yeah, like, it's very contained yeah, yeah and especially like a different time period too where it's like because that I, I feel like if you're watching a movie or a tv series and it's supposed to take place in a different time period and if, yeah. if let's say if it's someone that's from that you know that decade or whatever if you notice anything that's off it could like instantly take you out of it so i imagine there was a lot of um, you know attention to detail just to make sure everything was exactly oh. right oh yes 100 percent uh down to down to everything down to a t and that's it's like stiff. a giant page of the 70s I, I, and i love that stuff too i'm a sucker for like all that you know the little nitty-gritty behind the scenes you know kind of stuff just making it you know seem like you're, you're actually there i thought I, and it was like another interview, I think, that you had like did. I thought that I heard you didn't want to watch like any other movies to base your performance off of. Um, so I'm curious, how did you approach playing Lily, especially when it comes to Mr. Riggles kind of taking over her at one point? Uh, I kind of, I mean, before filming, I think I went down into a rabbit hole of exploring cults. <laughs> and... Uh, Sounds a bit strange. <laughs> and, um, yeah, just exploring uh, the 70s um, the 70s era, looking at, I think I've mentioned before, like looking at street interviews, um, Don Lane show. Um, but in terms of, like, preparing for the character on set, locking myself into the room and just staring at myself in the mirror and just trying to detach from myself, um, yeah. I don't know, just really blocking off the whole world. Yes, but I was definitely very fascinated by all the various cults oh, and Yeah, I was gonna say, I'm yeah. sure you probably came across some yeah. some interesting stuff in your research, I'm sure. Yeah, very interesting stuff. But um <laughs> I just loved immersing myself into the character of Lily. Um yes. Well, I mean your your, your performance was amazing. So that so when I heard that you didn't like want to base it off of any other performances i i just couldn't believe that because i was like wow i mean you you definitely as lily you know not not as you as uh, ingrid but as lily you definitely creeped me out quite a bit like in the in the movie just with the way that you know your movements the way that you know you talked you know when looking like at the screen and mm -hmm. stuff like that so i was I, I was really curious to see like how how you kind of prepared for that i think also a thing that enabled me um a lot was the fact that the Cairns brothers they just kind of let me do my thing on set they never really gave me too much like obviously they gave me direction but they they got excited by the things I was doing um you know they saw me doing a look to the camera and they oh they were so enthusiastic oh yeah we'll do that again yeah um they just kind of let me do my thing and do what they just were happy with what I was doing. And I think when a director's happy with what you're doing and just like so happy with it, you just, you feel so, you feel so good about yourself. You feel so able to, you know, you're able to act, assess other sides of the character, bring other things to the scene, play with it a bit more. And yeah, yeah when you play with it a bit more, you definitely access things that you didn't think were going to come out. <laughs> yeah, you kind of kind of surprise yourself with some of the stuff that you do. <laughs> Oh, I don't want to tell you that we thought of this on the spot if we didn't. Oh, this, I might be wrong, but 
for the bit where I think I remember this as we, me and um, Laura coming up for this, as the, um, coming up as, for this idea. But um, uh, when I when Laura reaches for my leg and I pull away, I think that was improvised. Okay. I think. But yeah, I mean, it just seems like that. Yeah, I say. Yeah. I mean, that, that that stuff. See, I, I love that kind of stuff too. Just like little thing, little you know, moments like that, little scenes where it's like you guys might have came up with it on the moment. But yeah, I mean, that, that it's really cool that you were in an environment like that where you kind of just were able to to do your own thing. Because I mean, that doesn't necessarily happen every time. You know, sometimes you know directors and whatever want to yeah. stick more to the you know to the script or to you know oh. what they're kind of looking for. So well, that's really I cool. Yeah. Exactly. So, I mean, that's, that's awesome that you kind of got to have fun and just do your own thing. And Hey, I mean, it worked out with what, with what yeah. we got in the, the final product. Can you talk about the process of being transformed into possessed Lily regarding just the makeup, the prosthetics? And do you remember kind of how long that like took to get all done? Yeah. I mean, came to set, uh, sat down for maybe three hours and they just worked their magic. And at the end, they did a reveal. Well, they said, oh, Ingrid, go to the mirror. And I was, like, closing my eyes, and I opened my eyes and saw this crazy prosthetic <laughs> on my face. It was quite crazy. Did um, you guys freak yourself out the first time you, like, um, saw it? Yes, 100%. But I think I just tried to move past that and motivate that, um, make, me, that make that motivate me to just... Um, really be more in the character yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, i'm assuming where like where you hadn't where you did the, sh the short for the horror you said before but was this kind of the first time that you had done anything like that as far as like the the makeup and the prosthetics and stuff like that goes oh yes it was the first time um and with the prosthetic uh the other one where i have the well the thing over my face the tight um yep. the mold of my face um, I couldn't see anything, so Colin and Cam would come up to my face and, like, mimic, like, oh, yeah, like, thumbs up. And I couldn't see anything. I couldn't really hear anything either. So I was just guided by, you know, how we practised it in rehearsals, like the looks, because it's very, for the stuff with all the special effects, you really have to be on the mark. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's funny not being able to hear anything. Oh, yeah. No, I'm actually so... so Seems like just like overall, there was a lot of uh, a lot of trust like on the set. So not only from their side, we're just like kind of letting you do your own thing. But like you said, this was your first time doing anything as far as like the makeup and the prosthetics. And I imagine like getting that stuff put on the, for the first time for somebody can be kind of like, OK, I can't see. I can't hear anything. Can't see. This is a yeah. little little weird, but you kind of just it sounds like you trusted them with, you know, their direction yeah. and everything. And it worked out. Yeah, and it makes you definitely makes you dissociate more from yourself, which helps um, yeah. being in the car. Yeah, when you see when when you open your eyes and you see <laughs> like who is this person that I'm you know I'm looking at like right now? What was it? Um, I mean, you kind of talked a little bit about just like the, uh, working with like Laura, but what was it like working with both David and Laura on the film? Um, you know, just like overall. Oh, um, incredible. Uh. Both uh, David and Laura are very lovely people and um, they always give me a lot to work with um, in the scenes, even when, you know, we're not um, filming, they're getting into character. So we're getting into character from, like, rehearsals. Um, and, you know, we talk afterwards. But, um, yeah, uh, Laura is... So lovely, we talk heaps um, on set. And yeah, David as well, just talking about his experience in the horror um, genre for so long is really fascinating. Um, and I think also, you know, we're in Melbourne here, so the one card for, the draw card um, for the show was having this massive American actor come on set. So we're all so excited, like who's this? How's he going to be? You know, you kind of hear like, oh, Americans coming. Like, that's so cool. But he's just the most, oh, he's so cool. He's, yeah. His wow. work, I mean, just like over the past, you know, decade plus or whatever, just the, the amount of, like, he's one of my favorite actors working today. Just the amount 
of work, the amount of roles that he's done, you know, all these big projects, you know, smaller yeah. projects too. It's, it's insane. But yeah, I was curious yeah. where you mentioned, you know, where he's like done stuff in horror. Obviously he's a big horror fan, but he's also, you know, he likes like Halloween and stuff like that. Yeah. So did you ask him, you know, any questions about like the horror genre or just like Halloween in general? I uh, yeah, no, I did. Definitely about Halloween. He's talking about how he has a big Halloween party showing me all the different outfits that he's done, which is pretty cool. Um, and also very impressive. David, um, his dressing room, he basically lives there in his little fridge. He's got like all the drinks you could think of, but they're like lined up like perfectly, <laughs> like ones. Like you just, it's so cool. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I guess like you, do it, time. <laughs> you do it for, a, you know, do it for enough time that it's just like, you just kind of get it down where like, I know exactly how I want everything, you know, so yeah. set up where, you know, where it's at. But, um, but yeah, I know for, for you guys, like Halloween isn't as big of a thing, like over there for you guys, right? Not really. Yeah. Not as big. I think more in recent years, obviously. It's starting um, to get a little bit more. Yeah. It's starting to get a little bit more popular. Yeah. I've never really celebrated Halloween myself. I'm hoping to get into it though. Yeah, as I say, now now I feel like you have to like at least you know, at least yeah. do one of these years where you were in a you know a Halloween movie because I think this film for sure just where it takes place you know Halloween and stuff like that it's going to be one of those movies that gets into people's rotations every year and they watch it. You know, I have like my movies that I watch every year for the the Halloween or we call yeah. it spooky season. Um, and I'm a big. Too. Uh, what what ones do I watch? Uh, so, uh, have you heard of Pumpkinhead? No, I haven't. It's Pumpkinhead. an '80s horror movie. Um, it, it, I feel like it doesn't get enough love. It's like a creature yeah. feature. But yeah, check that out if you get a chance. Um, I'm gonna check that out. I'm actually gonna. Look yeah, yeah. I'll say, feel free to yeah, take you know, take take any notes. Um, as far as uh, what about Hocus Pocus? Have you heard of Hocus Pocus? No, I haven't. You haven't heard of Hocus Pocus? Oh, what? Is it very scary? No, so that so Pumpkinhead would probably be more. I don't. I don't think that for me at least. I guess it's not scary, but the monster, I guess, is a little little creepy. Um, but Hocus Pocus is more of like it's a Disney um, Halloween movie. It came out in like the '90s, and it's funny because like initially when it came out, it wasn't that big, and then just over the years, it's become this like cult classic thing. And uh, I live not too far from Salem, Massachusetts, where they filmed the original movie and if you ever get a chance to come to the states like go to salem massachusetts because that's like one of the the halloween yeah. capitals of the the country wow. like, they, they go all out like the whole month of october the streets are packed you just have people dressed up in costumes and stuff like that so yeah if you oh, ever that's wow that's crazy yeah yeah so those um hocus pocus uh, pumpkin head um uh mm -hmm. scream I don't know if you've ever seen like the original uh, yeah. General Ortega. That's how I'm, I've never yeah. watched it. But. Yeah. Yeah. The new ones. Yeah. So like the original one from 96 is like one of my favorites. Oh, um, original. Yeah. So they're like, yeah, they're on like six now, which is, you know, which is crazy or going to yeah. be on seven. You know what I did see? Oh, Saw. Oh, yeah. Is that one? Yeah. Um, they're on oh, Saw 11 yeah. now. <laughs> I, that, I couldn't do that. I had to turn it off. Yeah, Saw is like, because you have like the different genres. Saw is like a little bit more like gory um, compared, yeah. you know, like, compared to some other movies that are scary, but not necessarily gory. That's kind of like Saw's thing. Um, yeah. So like, yeah, I can understand Saw not being for like everybody. But um, yeah, some of the other ones, I think you probably should be good with like Pumpkinhead, like Scream, Hocus Pocus for sure, mm -hmm. where that's like more kids. Yeah. Um, Casper, the friendly ghost, uh, with Christina Ritchie. Yeah. Um, that's another like kids kind of like Halloween movie. I could like go through with you, Ingrid, and like probably give you, give you like a whole list of like a bunch of you know different movies that I, that's so I cool. throughout the I'm year. I'm actually check these out. Yeah, I'm a like I'm a huge fan. Like, and same thing for Halloween. I decorate the yard. Like, we actually have people that come like trick or treating and go through, and like we do like a haunted house and everything like that. So, uh, do you do the pumpkins? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We decorate pumpkins and all that, all that stuff. Do you yeah. make pumpkin pie? Oh, yeah. Pumpkin pie. Um, pumpkin marshmallows. Pie. Yeah, we do um, apple. So apple crisp is like a big thing. Yeah. Like Apple pie, apple crisp. That's like my favorite, favorite time of the year. It's like some of my 
favorite dishes to eat. That's so good. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, you'll, you know, eventually, yeah, if you get a chance to, you know, to make to the States, you'll have to try out like all this, you know, this different stuff that we have here. It's, it's a lot of fun. It's my favorite time of the year for sure. I'd love to come and really live out the horror experience. Yeah. The Halloween oh. experience. There's yeah. plenty, plenty to do. I would, you know, speaking, uh, speaking of David too, I had saw, or I was like listening to it, like an interview that he did. And he said that, uh, Ingrid is going to give Linda Blair a run for her money with the most terrifying child performance where a lot of people consider the exorcist, you know, one of the, if not the scariest movies of all time, mm -hmm. what does that kind of mean to hear that, you know, coming from him, from someone like yeah. him? Oh, I mean, it's incredible. Um, he's such a talented um, actor, oh, and he's got he's done so much. Um, he's definitely going to be the next best thing, anyways. Um, <laughs> oh, like I said, he's one of my favorites too, for sure. Oh, he's incredible. But yeah, that's a it's a big compliment. I've never watched The Exorcist, but I'm, I've obviously I've heard that it's a big movie. I want to actually. That's something I need to come around to watching. I've yeah, you'll have to. You'll have to watch The Exorcist for sure. That one, yeah, I'll be I'll be interested like to hear, you know, if you get a chance to watch it, like what your your thoughts are on it cuz yeah, a lot of people consider it like one of the scariest movies of all time. So it's not not so much yeah. gory, but it's just yeah, really creepy and different things yeah. that happen in it. So I'll see if I can get through it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> see if you can make through it. But yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I saw that and I was just like, wow, I mean, that's that's incredible, you know, coming from from someone like him. And now uh, what was I'm curious, like, what was your favorite scene to film from the movie uh, overall? And why did that one kind of like stick out for you? Um, I mean, I liked filming all the scenes. I think the, the, maybe the scenes just um, I'm trying to think of a specific scene. Uh, look, maybe just the general scenes where I'm chatting on the chair with um, Laura and David. Yeah. Just conversing with them is really fun. And being able to work off other actors is really fun. As much as I love doing all the stuff um, by myself, not by myself, sorry, um, you know, the possession scene. Yeah. I really enjoy working off other actors because every scene, every time you do it, it's going to be different. Um, you never know how it's going to go. I like the uncertainty of just working off other people. Mm -hmm. And I don't really like rehearsing all too much. I just like going in and working off other actors and that's what's going to drive me to respond because you're not going to practice something because it's never going to be the same every time. Yeah. And that's what, that's what makes it fun for sure. And this being like your, your first, uh, you know, big, uh, like horror project. Cause I know you said you did the, the short, uh, what was your overall like experience of just working on a, a horror movie for the first time? And was there anything about the experience that maybe surprised you that you didn't expect going into it? Oh, um, the experience was incredible. Um, I mean, as I said before, Colin and Cam were incredible directors. They really just let actors and cast, whatever you want to call it, like do their own thing, bring different things to the table. Um, they never put you into a box. Um, they just let you feel free in the role and whatever comes out, comes out because that's who, like, you're real. as long as you're in the role, they... They're just really excited by what you bring to the table, which is really lovely. So I think that's what made um, the experience of being on a horror film, this horror film, so great. Um, I also think, you know, being in a small environment, um, different things can go wrong um, yeah. in terms of, like, you know, the worms yeah. going everywhere. <laughs> uh, no. Uh, just different things. You can never plan how it's going to come out, uh, you know, because of the makeup and all the effects. And, yeah, it's really nice. Just it's so refreshing not having things so scheduled. It's just however it comes out, it comes out and you just feel so free in it. Um, I think the thing that shocked me, I think just def definitely how real the the prosthetic felt on my face. <laughs> definitely felt like it was a part of me that's that's pretty cool but at the same time i'm sure you like you definitely like had, did a double take you know seeing like seeing yourself like we talked about before but yeah no i mean mm -hmm. I, and i'm glad too that you just had again like that you had that experience where it was just like so free and open and just like you were kind of able to do you know whatever you wanted to like to like a degree and just let things yeah. happen yeah 100 um 
Also, you don't often come across a script like this. It's really one in a million. And these are the types of roles I love doing. I love just digging my teeth into the character, really understanding the character. I love learning everything about them uh, down to, I just love researching them, thinking about them. Um, that's really what I love doing. I love the character roles. And I know it's one in a thousand, this type of role, but like this, these types of roles are really the dream for me. I would love, oh, I'd love to be able to do cool roles like this. Well, I hope you like, hope you like saying some of that stuff there. I hope that maybe this is the start yeah. of like getting to see you in some more mm -hmm. horror projects yeah. in the future. Cause uh, yeah, I think that, I mean, for being like your first major one, you, you nailed it. And um, yeah, I'd love to see you kind of take on some other different types of, of roles in the, in the genre, like as well. Thank you. You're, you're very welcome. So, and I'm also, as far as like, I, I loved how the film had both like skeptics and then believers of the supernatural. And it kind of played with the audience. Yeah. It's fine. Like at one point I was watching the movie and I was almost, I was sitting there and I was kind of wondering is this actually happening or maybe yeah. like they kind of had me second guessing myself. Like maybe this is all just kind of like an illusion or something like that. Yes. So I'm curious, as far as like the supernatural goes, have you, have you yourself, have you ever had like a, a supernatural experience or anything like that? Oh, a hundred percent. Oh, you have? <laughs> like, oh, sometimes well, I've seen a ghost once. Yeah. Actually on a thing I was, filming a few years ago, a TV thing anyway. Um, like when I was leaving the, uh, the stairs, I turned around and I saw a silhouette of this person. And the interesting thing is I went to one of the people, um, the like housekeepers, and asked them um, like to describe what they saw because they also saw a ghost and they described exactly to the T what I saw and it was freaky. <laughs> That that is super creepy. Yeah. So okay, so then you're definitely sounds like you're a, a believer. Then obviously, since you've had something like that happen to you, yeah. And I definitely don't think that you know human. This is the only life. I definitely think there's other entities. Yeah. And I don't. I think if you don't believe that, well, then you don't yeah. believe in magic. You don't believe in. I hundred percent believe in you know supernatural. Supernatural, yeah. No, I'll tell you like real quick because I've told this story like on my channel like before that uh, this was years ago. So like when I was in high school as a freshman, and um, I went mm -hmm. to this place that's not too far from me. Uh, they have these old like bunkers from like one of the wars, and I'd went there with a couple people. Um, we had you had to have flashlights because it was like underground, so you couldn't see anything if you didn't have flashlights. So we all had brand new flashlights, brand new batteries. Went in there. And we were looking around the different rooms. There's like graffiti and stuff all over the walls. And we got to this one room that there was like, there was like candles on the floor in the room and stuff like that. So someone like had definitely been there at some point. And I just remember we got in the center of the room and all of the flashlights went out at the same time and we couldn't get them to come back on for like probably like a good minute. And then they all pop popped back on at the same time. <laughs> and I just remember mm -hmm. being there and I was like, all right, I think it's time to, you know, time to go for the day. That's freaky. Yeah. That's so freaky. So I was like, ever since then, I mean, I've always kind of like believed in that stuff anyway, yeah. just with like being like the horror and Halloween guy that I am. Um, but that was, that was kind of like confirmation for me. I'm like, okay, yeah, there's definitely some, you know, weird stuff, you know, going on for sure. That's so freaky. Oh my gosh. But that's cool. Um, I loved that, that, you know, you had like an experience. It's always fun to hear, you know, if uh, yeah. any other people have like run into stuff like that. Sometimes I feel like there's someone behind me and I just like, if I'm cooking, I just like talk to her. I'm like, I'm not here to hurt you. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> Hope you're having a good day. I'm like, why am I just speaking out loud? This is so strange. But I just like speak to her, tell it to, um, I come in peace. I mean, that's, that's all you can do. And I can just imagine like someone else coming into the room and like, Ingrid, who, who are you talking to? Yeah. <laughs> and I heard something, I believe that, um, you know, ghosts and stuff. They're not, they're not coming out to hurt you. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah. as long as you're nice to them, I mean, hopefully you should, you should be good. Yeah. If you treat it like your friend, then I think yeah. you're all good. You should be yeah. good. Yeah. And as far as just like late now with the devil, uh, devil goes too, it's, 
uh, I've already seen it being talked about as like, you know, people's like one of their favorite movies, horror movies, you know, of the year for sure. Um, from working on the film and just the reactions that you have seen, uh, why do you think that audiences have kind of connected with the movie so much, like in your opinion? I think it's really unique. Um, and the Cannes brother, the Cannes brothers, um, I think they have a real love for the genre. Um, and people are fascinated by the fact that it's a small, you know, indie film with a very small budget shot in one location. And it plays on, I think it plays on lots of creativity and humour that I'm not sure. I don't think it's often brought to, well, like, films in general. So it's something quite different. Yep. Um, and I think when people go to the cinema, they just want to escape from their from their day-to-day -day life. You don't want to go and watch something mundane all the time. Um, you want to have that, feel that escape from, you know, your own life. Um, and yeah. Totally Talk, yeah, things are difficult, you know, in the world at the moment. So people just want that escape. And I'm glad that I'm so happy too that this, like, you know, got the chance to to make it in, you know, like theaters. Um, because I know it's like hitting shutter, like streaming, uh, like this month, like as well. But I'm glad that it got like a theatrical release because there's nothing better than getting to see, uh, especially like a horror movie, like on the big screen. Um, so just like glad that a lot of people got to to see it mm -hmm. on there. But I think it, it'll also be fun for people to watch it uh, late night, you know, whether it's like on their TV yeah. or whatever, like right yeah. before they're about to go to bed, just to kind of have the same setting as if you're watching a yeah. late night TV show. Um, yeah. So I think there's like multiple ways that you could watch it and really, really enjoy it. I think uh, older people as well. I mean, from reading reviews, people can really connect with the fact that it's shot in the 70s, all the humor and jokes, but even for younger audiences, I think. Um, People just love to see something that's humorous, um, like s scary and creative. Yep. It's cool okay. to have something different. And like, same with me reading the script. It's just so interesting to read something so different. Yeah. Yeah. Like you said, it's, it's something where it's like, you don't necessarily, you know, get these kind of roles like every day. Mm -hmm. So when you get a chance to, to play a character and be a part of a film like this, it's, you know, I imagine yeah. it must just be so much fun for, for you guys. Um, is to kind of wrap things up for you, Ingrid, is there anything um, else that you would like to say, you know, just about working on Late Night with the Devil? Um, anything you'd like to say to the fans and where can people kind of keep up to date with your work, you know, in the future as well? Shout out my Instagram, um, <laughs> Ingrid Torelli and then underscore. So I think if I have any other things coming up, I'll probably share it on there. Perfect. But yeah, no, it's just really exciting to see that people have been taking this so well. And it's just so lovely to receive all these lovely reviews and to see that it's been taken so well. And yeah, Colin and Cam really deserve this. Same with David and, you know, Laura. Everyone that worked on the film are nice. really great people and cre creative people. So it's just so exciting. Yeah. It's shot in Melbourne. Like, it's so crazy. It's shot in Docklands. Like, for me, that's just... And it's gotten such traction in the US. For me, that's like, it feels like ages away. It's just crazy. You guys, has it um, has it even premiered like over there for you guys yet? Uh, uh, premieres today. Yeah. Oh, it premieres today? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. So uh, do you have like any plans to, like to see it with like any friends or anything like that? Or no, I might go, I don't know. I might go. I want to go and see it today. That'll be fun to um, see it with like audiences and stuff like that. Yes. For sure. Yeah. Oh, I really want to soak in the the atmosphere, people's reactions. Yeah. Yeah. This is <laughs> really feels like a once in a lifetime opportunity. I really want to soak it in. Yeah. yeah. No, for sure. And I'm, hey, I mean, yeah. you you deserve it. Um, I'll make sure to link your uh, like put your uh, Instagram like in the description of like the video and stuff like that too, so people can give you a follow. Um, yeah, I just want to say, you know, thank you so much for your, your time today. It was great getting Thanks to talk to you. Me. Oh, you're very, you're very welcome. Um, great getting to talk to you about the, the film, you know, your career and just like all things Halloween and, and horror. It was, it was such a fun time. Yeah. I had a really fun time actually. Thank you. And you're very welcome. And of course you're welcome back anytime in the future as well. Thanks Pat. I appreciate that. You're very welcome. Hello, my name is Ingrid Torelli and I play Lily in Late Night with the Devil and you're listening to Pop Culture with Pat.